You ain't nothing but a snitch, bitch. Snitch, bitch. Snitch, bitch. Okay, that's the hottest track from, uh... well, anywho, it's your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva. I'm going to go ahead and do a late review of Empire's, what is this, season two, episode two, Without a Country. Um, basically, uh, I have a friend that did a song a long time ago. Uh, Daylon Grace did a song called Get Out Of, Get Out Of My House, or something like that. The title was Get Out Of My House. Jamal then said, everybody packing. He done told everybody in episode one to get the fuck up out of his house. Now everybody got to get out of Empire 2. Andre, Hakeem, and his mom, they mama, they all got to get out. You got your to-go box. Uh, you know, that, that paper box where you put your plant, and you, all your little personal effects and whatever else you can't pack will have security sent to you. Jamal is done. So now that's when the planning begins and that's when it's time to start what is going to be called the Lion Dynasty headed by Cookie. Uh, you know, as Cookie has always said, coming into this, if it had not been for her, Empire would not be. And so, you know, Lucius is all up in his feelings. All his artists are left. Tiana done left. V done left. All he got is little Jamal and where's Titan? And you know what? They didn't show Becky this episode. Let me back up before I really get into this review full-fledged. I'm, I'm still trying to understand what is 50 Cent's beef with empire and why he feels like he has to say things that he knows is going to stir the pot recently there was a, a drop in ratings and he said it's probably because it came out with too much of gay stuff and i'm like i don't think that stopped shonda rhyme shows because lord knows it's all kinds of gay stuff that happens now is there some truth to what 50 cents is saying possibly because not everyone is going to accept the fact that homosexuals now have equal rights to uh, the, the what is traditionally uh, things reserved for a man and woman that are coupled together. Um, you may not be comfortable confronting homosexuality. I get that. That's fine because that's one of the things that Empire is going to address because it's one of its executive producers is uh, is a homosexual. But I don't think that affects the rating. Quite frankly for me, so far the first two episodes, I have enjoyed them, but the flow of the storyline as we saw in the first season with all these different cameos, it's it's just it's just not working for me. And I'm just like Lee Daniels, you gotta pump your brakes. You can have one special guest, um, like you did, you know, one or two here and there. But it's just like everybody and a mama. And that's why I'm like, can I be an empire? Uh anywho, we didn't see Portia or Becky. I guess the assistants got a night off. So anywho, uh, let's get back into it. So, uh, Jamal Cookie, uh, and Andre and Hakeem is a family divided, basically. And so they go down to the little gunshot, uh, studio where Jamal almost, well, actually, who was it? I think Jamal last season, Andre said Hakeem's little thug friends to rob his own brother. Andre, but you know now, he done had a meltdown and all that shit. Uh, he done found Jesus, so he done got his life. Uh, Cookie don't want Anika to be involved, but Anika is going to be involved because, quite frankly, as Andre said, she's uh, one of the best in the country for A&R. Not to mention the skill set that she has. And furthermore, Hakeem loves her. He's bonking her. So, I mean, you know... <laughs> You really can't tell your kids what to do. Like he said, he grown. And mom, you can't be telling me what to do. So we come to Lucius, who's in the infirmary, in the jailhouse. And the doc's like, dude, I can't even give you your medication because your authorization form isn't here. And he's like, what? I've been coming here every week getting my medicine. And let me tell you something. That's some dirty crap. 
uh, that went on because one of the things as far as prisoners rights that they do have they do have a right number one to due process and they also have a right to their medication for the quality of life because basically you're prosecuting him and you're playing judge and juror and I'll get to that because later on they're on the yard which I finally figured out who Petey Pablo is Petey Pablo is the dude that they call big country so um Anywho, come to find out, uh, Ludacris, who is playing a security guard, I don't know why, a lot of people just were not here for him and his acting. I don't know if it's because of the antics he had pulled years ago, you know, doing move, bitch, get out the way, or, you know, my chick bad, my chick could, I don't know. But he played the best asshole CO I've seen. Um, he was, he was, he was calculating. He was, he made you want to punch him in the face to me personally. I was like, what an ass. Like, how are you going to set it up so somebody can't get their medication and going to come on the yard to my bus? Yeah, and big country is like, where the boys at? I don't see no boys. We men. And then next thing you know, he got to go to the hole because he stood up to Ludacris and, you know, Ludacris talking slick shit to, um, to Lucius. And all the dudes are doing on the prison yard is just trying to have a good time and enjoy each other's country or the jail yard, trying to enjoy each other's co company and make up a new rap song because they, they, they got to, Lucius got to continue to make, make records from jail like Tupac, okay? Um, especially since he ain't got MS no more. Um, so Ludacris was just an asshole. I, I really don't understand why anyone thought otherwise, but I thought he did a great job playing it. Maybe it's just me. I, I'm different anyway. Um, now Hakeem want to have an all girls group. I said, is this Vanity Six or Apollonia Six? What is it, Lord Jesus? He want to be the prince of, of Lion Dynasty of the Empire Part Two. I, the rehearsals were interesting. Selena Gomez showed up. You know, I forgot what her name is. Care Bear, Cheer Bear. I don't know what her name was. But either way, um, she is, uh, you know, Selena Gomez made a cameo. Um, oh, he wants to call the group Rainbow Sensation. Andre's like, that's a great concept. But, uh, and then Cookie, like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. That's the dumbest shit in history to where I was like, God damn, Cookie, Cookie is a mama that just keeps it real, ain't it? I mean, just crash all your dreams, no support. But, I mean, you got to keep it raw and real. Anika was like, he's like, Anika like it. And she was like, I don't give a damn what Anika like. And speaking of which, Anika was trying to get V together while they were in the studio in the hood. And V was like, I already know what it needs. I wrote the shit. And I was like, oh, damn, uh, Anika, girl, you might want to call Cookie because Cookie can handle people like that, girl. You are not built for that. You just aren't. Just like Cookie had to tell you, you know, if it wasn't for bitches like me, hoes like you would still be on your knees. And she was like, oh, my God, I got to clinch my pearls. Um... But I get it. You know, she tired of Hakeem with his mama issues, basically, is what it is. And I really need for you to get it together. Um, at some point during this episode, Jamal is having, uh, ironically, coincidentally, however you want to look at it, an interview with a TV magazine show called Spilling the Tea. And Cookie done bust up in there talking about, I need to get high keys at my head, girl. How you doing? How you doing? Smile for the camera. Let, let people know you still love your mama. Hey, girl. You know, I said, hey, what are you doing here? She was like, oh, mofo, I set up this interview for you. Okay. So, anyway, by the way, we need high keys at We starting our own record label. Bye-boo. Holla at you. At some point, Andre was taking Rhonda and Honda, his wife, who was allegedly pregnant, to the doctor. I personally don't think the heifer is pregnant because when she was over there trying to advocate for her husband to get back in an empire, she would drop the fact that, oh, I'm not drinking anymore on little vulnerable Jamal. Because Jamal was like, honestly, I really don't even want the company. I just really just want to make music and I would hand it over to him. But, you know, my hands are tied because my daddy got me on lock. I'm just doing whatever. I'm just happy that my daddy loved me and my gayness. Okay. Um... 
so anyways when she, if y'all noticed when Rhonda hugged Jamal did you see the look on his face he's like oh I'm gonna be an uncle and I'm like where are you gonna get this baby from Rhonda because I don't think that you're pregnant and did Andre even go in the doctor's office with you if something is up some is some is rotten in Denmark that's that's all I gotta say is that right Macbeth out out damn spot um <sighs> Jamal killed me when he called his little brother the baby trader. You mean the baby trader too? You want his album? I was like, oh my god. Um, let's see what else happened on this episode. It was a lot and not really a lot. Um, uh, quite frankly, Jamal, you know what? your enemies you always should keep close but you shouldn't have confessions with your enemies because when you told Rhonda that that's just her way in and that's probably why poor little Andre had a lapse in judgment and went back into his daddy like a lap dog um uh let's see so let's see let's see Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, Jamal goes to see his daddy, and he's like, Cookie came to see me about taking Hakeem's album and um, doing something with it at their own record label. And he was like, they uh, they better not be trying to eat off my table and take my name and stand to stand on what I believe, what I done built. And I'm just like, oh, God, Lucius, please. Uh, you should know Cookie better than that. Uh, furthermore, your stuff is registered that would be copyrighted in for a trademark infringements. And I don't think that Cookie can really afford or any of them can afford to have those costs because Lord knows those trouble damages uh, will get you in uh, any type of uh, property law claims that come up as far as intellectual property claims. Um, anywho, uh, while Jamal is there, there's this. He, you know, honestly, the meme came out, and it's true. He does look like a pimp named Slipback from way back off the boondocks. Thirsty. Thirsty Rollins. Your new lawyer. Easy Rollins' brother from a devil in a blue dress. Okay, no, I'm tripping. From my understanding, dude had been in the wire, but I only remember him. I think his name is Andre Rayo, and I remember him from G, and I also remember him from Shaft, the remake. Uh, in the early 2000s um, so anyway um, at some point you know Rollins overhears the conversation about the fact that his father isn't getting the medication because Ludacris has already forewarned uh, Lucius that say man uh, by the way your little medication might show up if you plead guilty because otherwise you could just fucking die for all we care and I'm just like oh my god who tells you that but in some ways it was good because I guess he was like Roxanne Ford ain't playing with you and you need to go ahead and give up the ghost and plead guilty just take your lumps and just get locked up dude because don't nobody give two flips about you so needless to say, Thirsty was like I graduated from the University of Guam. And even though I was like, University of Guam, that's like you saying I graduated. But either way, the Harvard attorney ain't getting it done. And let me just plug this in for my own sake. Although I am not licensed to practice yet, I will say this. And I am very proud to be a golden hurricane twice over from the University of Tulsa. Uh... Uh, graduated with a law degree from there and I will say this that I have heard that my fellow classmates uh, we can run circles around Harvard attorneys too so you know just like Thirsty put it he said different classrooms same curriculum it's all in how you apply it you know just because someone has a Harvard degree don't make them a better attorney just because someone was a C student in law school doesn't mean that they can't represent you because quite frankly C students are the best attorneys rest his soul Johnny Cochran he was a C student um so Thirsty Rollins said dude don't worry about it. I can hook you up okay I'm gonna take care of you and boy did he do it he got um he got uh he got Lucius all the recording equipment he needed, got him his medication right away. I mean, it was easy, does it do it easy? Um and next thing you know, Lucius has everything. However, 
old Luda creeping behind his messy behind that showed up to bust into the storage room because first of all when the the other little CL that was on duty was like dude come on in here let me hook you up with her Lucia's like oh hell they ain't jumping my ass today we ain't getting shanked in prison now when I'm not guilty of doing anything but being who I am and that is Lucia's line or Dwight Walker is it Dwight or Daryl I was on Daryl but Either way, needless to say, he's like, oh, I'm glad I came here early. Everybody get the fuck out. I'm about everybody going to the hole. And then he was talking crap to Lucius. And Lucius said something, you don't know, man, do you know who I am and do you know who I know? needless to say all that shit talking and trying to play for the other side for the federal prosecutor Roxanne Cleavage Fuller you know dull boy Ricky's mama from Boys in the Hood who every time we done seen her she got on cheap shoes and her boobs out I don't I don't but she do look good though I don't, how old is Boys in the Hood 20 some years old almost 30 years old and that woman still look good black don't crack baby but either way let's just say that Lucius got his ass whooped Thirsty got the music and got it released on the radio. Thirsty, I said, Thirsty is the Lincoln Lord. He rolled up in this old school beat up Lincoln in his pimp suit and a Lincoln. I said, Hey, just way back, way back, just sway, just sway. Um. So anyway, uh, needless to say, um. Ludacris character put up a good fight, but he just was no match for 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 uh, the men that Thirsty hired. So, Thirsty's a damn good attorney. I'd be the sneaky one, the slick back one, but you know, hey, he got it done. So, either way, uh, Hakeem is pissed because uh, Jamal is not going to release this album. Hakeem takes it upon his little busy body self, say, fuck it, I'll just leak it on the internet and make up my money. Uh, on tour but i don't even think that's gonna happen because if empire holds the rights and owns the masters you can't even really legally perform those without a license and jamal is not going to give you a license uh at some point though um because Jamal, because uh, Dad had told Jamal or Pop had told Jamal, you know what, you need to bring Hakeem back. He did have a meeting with Hakeem in the back seat of his car and Cookie trying to be all up in there. And, you know, he gonna roll the window up on his mom. I said, God, dog, Jamal is just cold blooded. Well, after they learn, after Andre overhears the fact that, because Andre's really trying to run this as a successful business, but his heart just really isn't in it. After he hears that Hakeem leaked his damn album on the damn internet, he was like, what were you thinking? You know what, mama? I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Cook it, bitch. my baby, please stay. Baby, 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 please stay. And Andre's like, no, I gotta go. And then he goes and he, he goes away. And, Father, look at me. I want to come back to Empire. And Lucius is like, son, are you still going to church? Are you praying? Just know God forgives and I don't. You on your own. Get out. Get out of my face. And he's like, well, I don't understand, Father. Why is it that you don't want me, but you accept Jamal for the longest you hated Jamal and everything he is. And now you look at me like I'm some mutant. And here I am standing before you could try it and open and I was just like oh Jesus I'm a star he said I'm contrite remorseful and humble and you look at me like I'm a muted father Ugh. and I was like oh Lord Jesus the next thing you know Lucius is staring at his son intently and that's when he has a flashback by the way some people couldn't figure that out if you paid attention to the blogs Lee Daniel said he was going to bring in Kelandria Ke Roland of Destiny Child fan Kelly Rowland, as we know her, the fabulous Kelly Rowland, to play uh, Lucius's mother when he was a young boy. And it's obvious that there were some mental health issues with his mother, which is why he take, probably takes issue with Andre. Um, the fact that he probably had to deal with a mother who had highs and lows, and probably as it is so often in the black community, probably wasn't getting treated. Um... 
it, it just was really a powerful scene when Andre was begging his father for forgiveness and to allow him to come back into Empire. But Lucius ain't trying to hear it. And Lucius just walks on. He's like, I don't hate you, son. But I, I, I just can't. And I think it really is, if, if all of us really look at everything in our lives, anything that happened to us in childhood does affect us in adulthood. And I think Empire does a great job of bringing it across. Lucius gets his court, his bail hearing. Uh, Thirsty is late for this hearing. The prosecutor trying to have Lucius locked back up. And he's like, oh, no, hold up. Wait a minute. Stop the press. I got the evidence you need, Judge. Oh, my God. Thirsty plays a dirty game. Did y'all see? Because, see, I missed it. I had to watch it again tonight. Did y'all see when the pictures, well, the evidence he gave the judge had him in a ball gag and bondage, S&M? He's like, oh, yes. You know what? He is not a threat to me. One million dollar bail. You can go home, Mr. Lion. Get out of my courtroom because mm -mm, I don't want nobody to know I'm into this freaky shit. Mm -mm. My question is, what did he give the prosecutor? Because Lord knows she got all her stuff out there for the world to see. I want to see this new evidence. I was like, I bet you do, girl, but you don't want to see the judge in that compromised position. Mm -mm. Uh, so, at some point, Hakeem goes to Tiana during this episode when he's trying to create his vanilla sensation, that rainbow sensation, whatever sensation it is. A whack-ass name. Um, Tiana's like, what kind of record? Uh -uh, I'm doing my own thing. I'm on my own for a month. My name is not Apollonia. Okay. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. No, you need to find you another leading lady. And I can't remember if it was before or after, but at some point he was in the hot tub. I said, why is it you always in the hot tub with some random woman, Hakeem? You just turn into a little hoe. I just don't know about you sometimes. I wanted to say, all he got to say is, in my bedroom, there's a brass water bed. And uh, it could be so lovely. And I was just like, oh my God, is he trying to have Apollonia six I'm a sex shooter. Come and play with my affection. Come on, kiss the gun. Guaranteed for fun. Okay. Anyway, it, Jamal and Hakeem have a touching moment where they're writing music, but uh, Jamal learns that uh, Hakeem has leaked his album, and he tells him, you ain't shit, you ain't gonna be shit, and I'm just like, it really is true, you're turning to your father, because your father basically told you, you weren't gonna be nothing, um, don't do your little brother like that, uh, they get a place, Cookie um, has uh, has Hakeem help him help her sweep up the place because it is a dump. And I was like, boy, you better pick up the broom because you know Cookie will whoop your ass with that broom again. Uh, let's see. Uh, Snitch Bitch is a hit on the radio. They can't get enough of it. Um, Thirsty made it through for him. Let's see what else. So I think that pretty much was this episode. This review probably went too long. Um, but like, hell, it's 2 o'clock in the morning here. Um, anyway, uh, let's get ready for Empire Wednesdays tonight. Because it's Wednesday morning now here in L.A. And shit, it's time for most people getting up for work on the East Coast. Um. Uh, Anyway, tell me what you thought about this. The upcoming episodes look like it's going to be good. It was a little slow, but I think this is just the foundation. Plus, they've ordered more. I think, what did they have? 14 episodes that they can do uh, that was ordered by Fox. Uh, Scream Queens, be sure to check that out. I haven't watched the second episode. And I think I'm on the third episode. But either way, I really did enjoy it. It's hella funny. I watched all of the... Actually, I did. I watched the first two hours. Hilarious. Rosewood massively improved uh, this week. The The acting wasn't so constipated. So I'm definitely going to check that out. I'll possibly do a double review of the, of the first, well, episode two and three of Rosewood. Minority Report, like I said, I'm not going to be into it. Totally loving the Muppets on ABC too, by the way. Um, I, I can't get enough. That's just part of my childhood. Anywho, that is all for this review of Empire. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, share, uh, comment. I love comments. I love responding to comments. And uh, y'all make it a great day. Empire Wednesday.